Well, hello! Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, a neighborhood biography artist, and I'm joined with Hubby. Hubby? Hubcap, sorry. <laughs> He's checking audio to make sure we're not munchkins today. Hey, Kathy, Burl, Spence, Mike, Sheila. Did I miss anybody yet? I don't. If I miss you, I'm so sorry. Anyway, we're starting the dark background. I know my horse is not all in yet. Every time I try to sit down and burn, something happens, and we are currently under a set evacuation order, meaning get set because it could go, but everything is slowed down, and I don't feel it's going to come to us. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Hey, Goha. So looking at this, I think we're going to start right in here. We got some really good darks. But then we also have little little flowers just kind of peeking through. They're not black, but they're dark. But they're going to give um, some interest to that dark and break it up. And working on the horse here yesterday, I found that the 18 large and the 3B, I'm trying to find the best way to move the camera, 3B were, were the best options in getting a smooth burn. Good. Hopefully you guys can't hear the fan. It's right underneath me and I can feel the vibration. So I'm set at four. I am not going full on black. Not yet. I'm going to build these up. We're going to go nice and slow and I just heard me. I know. I got my sound on. I'm going to have to stop. Alright. So I'm just going in circles. I don't have to make all of this completely even because we want some of those lighter areas and then we can back it up closer to our mane that way we can start putting some shape to our horse so I'm just using the tip and then there's going to be some areas that I need to get a super smooth burn our egg here and then where I want it smooth and dark that I'm gonna have to go back and build up because right now I'm at four and this is on poplar so let's go smooth I want to go smooth and even I'll drag down lift and drag lift and drag that lifting up my pen right there just gives it that half second to recover some of the heat all wood burning pens that are currently on the market lose their heat and the tip I'm gonna have to do this because we I got the window open we got a breeze and it's gonna cool off my tip if I don't so as soon as it stops I'll move my hand it gets hard because I'm trying to hold the board all right it's a nice drag slow flat just dragging it and I'm trying to keep it even on how long I do the drag. So sometimes I'll count in my head. One, two, three, four. Lift. One, two, three, four. And I overlap the edge. Meaning where I've got one leg that's come down on the left. When I lift up, that right leg kind of goes over it. It's the only way I can think to explain that. And so the slower I go, the darker it's going to burn. But then when I want some flowers, like down in here, I can go faster. Again, I can always go back and darken this up. And blend it into that dark. And that's why I didn't, in the pattern, I didn't put every single little flower in. Because I knew I could fake it with a stroke. So these are the oval strokes and then blend. And where I ended the burn at the top, I'm just going to overlap a little bit and drag back down. And because I'm talking, I'm not counting how long I'm doing it. I'm just trying to get a rhythm to it. I think eventually you just get like, you become so used to it that you probably do it automatically, right? Yeah. And sometimes I need to blend, so I will go back over that burn and go a little slower. 
I don't want to up my heat yet because then it's going to gouge the wood. So I will have all this blocked in before I will raise it. And I haven't decided, this poplar is burning a little different. I haven't decided if I'm going to go half a heat up, so meaning going up to four and a half, or if I'll jump to five. Because I don't want to gouge the wood. I just want it to be a nice, smooth burn. Do you ever find when you're writing with non-burning tools that you kind of like do it for like three or four seconds at a time? <laughs> no. No. Because no. you're so used to it. Like writing with a pen and you're... Well, if I have, I haven't stop. noticed it. Try to stop. Well, I always have to stop and readjust my pen anyway in my hand. I'm one of those who holds the pen, whatever pen or pencil it is, tight. And so my hand starts hurting and I have to adjust, micro adjust as I go. So maybe that is part of something I picked up from burning and I just didn't pay attention. Or I do that in burning because that's how I do it with my pen or pencil. One or the two. I don't do it so much anymore, but man, I used to have a death grip on my Oh, I still do, and, and I have to stop and tell myself to relax my hand. See, I'm going to try to go over here, and then we'll go ahead and try to up the heat and see what it looks like. I know this takes time. I know we want the background in now. We want to see what it looks like now. But if we build up these darks, it's going to look so much better. Oh, I'm behind in chat because my chat froze, and I looked up the, at the monitor, and I see a chat still running. Oh. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow. Hi, no, Gary. Nobody is saying anything. Uh, yeah, so we got, uh, yep, Jerry. Yes. <laughs> I thought we had more. There was a lot of chat there. So I'm just kind of tapping around and see how it's a different burn based on how I move my pen. Let's see, we'll get some darks here. I have never been to France there, Mike. It's I should have visited when I was in Germany. I'm mm, surprised. Yeah, well, it was such a pain. Because you got to find somebody who's going. And it's usually like a car, you know, like, hey, three or four of us are going down to France. You want to cram in the car? I'm like, Exhausted from work. I'm like, no, it doesn't sound good, you know. Right, so just tapping around. And if we burn some over some of it, that's fine because it's a lighter heat. It's just going to help give more of that depth that we're going to want with this. And right now, I'm trying to look at my reference, but yeah. In this case, we're all going to do it differently anyway since this is a group project. So I'm not going to stress about so it. So since, since it's not actually the horse. It's yeah, it's not the it's horse. Not so, so I could actually go a lot more. I'm going realistic with the horse, but with the background, I could go a lot more abstract and, art and artistic with it because as long as it complements the horse, it isn't going to matter. So if you want the background to compliment the horse, shouldn't it say stuff like lettering that says, what a nice horse. <laughs> That's a cool mane. Then it would be complimentary. See, folks, uh -huh. we, we had a lot of smoke there? in the air yesterday, and I think maybe, maybe you cut off some oxygen there. Look, we had smoke in the air. A lot. And it might have cut off some of my oxygen, but I'm sure it didn't affect me at all. Look, we had a lot of smoke in the area the other day, and it might have cut off some oxygen, but it had no effect at all. What are we doing? Huh? We're just hanging with our friends. Oh, cool. That's nice. So I'm trying to... Hey, that's a nice horse. With a complimentary background. You <laughs> drink. Oh. <laughs> So I have my notifications on because in case mm. we get a, a we have to keep them. Feedback order. Yeah, we have to keep it on. 
So I'm just going through and kind of filling in some more darks in between where I've already burned. I definitely want some darks up against the horse. I'm going to flip my board so it's easier for me to reach things. That means I also have to move my camera. You're very strong to be able to flip a horse. <laughs> yes, I flipped a horse. I flipped a horse. What's even more impressive is that it landed back on its hooves. It's like an act. Yes, we practice it long and hard. You're like, hup, hup, hey! And the horse lands on its feet. All right. Yes, he's here all year. I am, all the time. So right up against the mane. Because you put a ring on it. I put a ring on it. So we're stuck or, or you agreed to this. <laughs> you agreed to this madness. Yeah, my words are getting thrown back at me. Yep. All right, it's nice up against the, the mane. Because we do see this part of the mane. It doesn't blend in. So we're going to get right up against it. I feel like we need some more darks in here. We need to push some a little bit further back. The darks in the background make it push back, but it also brings the lighter things more forward. So we need to keep that balanced. Okay. We've got big whites here. That's why I've got the circles on the board. Yes, Kathy, a lot of Arizona is on fire. 241,000 acres. We were just talking about this the other day, because where I grew up, I had, there was one wildfire, and it got 50, 50, about 50 miles from our house. That was pretty much the closest I've ever experienced a you know, wildfire situation. But here, it's been every year. Yeah, well, Arizona always is. We're the, between us and California. We're top states for. That's because we're only 15 feet from the sun. <laughs> yes, we are. So you can't stretch too far. If you if you if you stretch too high, you might actually you might accidentally touch the sun. It would be dangerous. You have yes. to keep your hands low all the time. You wear a hat. Asbestos clothing. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's up our heat just so I can get some depth in here. Let's show you how I'll be doing the rest of it. Some more than others. You see some areas, maybe I left a little too much white. So when I go to go over an area, I can push it back first. That way it's still burned. Got some heat to it when I go darker around it. So let's go ahead and go four and a half and see what happens. Remember all wood is different. And there's a direction each piece of wood prefers to be burned in. And you can tell based on how it burns. And sometimes if you, even though you're doing the same direction, meaning up and down, if you flip the board, sometimes it just burns better the other way. Tina M. Dimmer says, Hi, first time watching. I'm learning. Any tips you can give me? I got this. Watch Valerie's videos. <laughs> there's a ton of tips there. Yeah, there's almost 300 videos. But we're uh, also... Sanding. She's also here every every Tuesday at this time. Yeah. So that's good, too. Yep. I also got a blog that actually will go over some of the basics for prepping and wood burners and how to care for your wood burners wire tips. So see I'm just going over that lighter part but because I'm moving quickly it's pushing it back not making it so bright but it's there. And make sure that you like and subscribe because yes, through the magic of the internet it will be faster for you to learn. <laughs> don't. You don't. Be good. Be good. I can't. Yeah. Or Look at who I live with. I'm being good, so you must be good. <laughs> if I have to be good, you have to be good. For All right, let's push some of this back. 30 minutes on camera. <laughs> hey. Sometimes. Not hey. even all of that. Still doing it. So let's push it back some more. You see it's burning lighter going in this direction, but if I flip it, 
we're gonna get a darker yeah so my uh, I've got some things written up that hopefully will help um, it sanding burning the right kind of wood meaning not trying to when you're new not trying to work on pine because pine has hard and soft grains and doesn't burn equally or evenly that can be quite frustrating and hard on your wood burner it would be like trying, trying to, to roller skate it the first time on gravel instead yes. of pavement yeah well no it's like trying to roller skate on a road before you've learned to roller skate and a smooth roller skating rink. I feel like the metaphors are similar. Mine's better. <sighs> You're the boss. That was recorded. Oh no. That was recorded. Oh no. You guys heard that. I am no coward. I have the power. So I'm just going to push these back, slow, burns lighter. Just like Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> Unlimited power. When I move my pin slower, hotter it'll burn. Tina, Valerie is using an Optima. Yes. She asked. Yes. My favorite and the only one out of all of the ones I got that I use. There's a long story there, but I think there's a long story written on it too. Yeah. Yes. And don't you on the blog. On it too? Uh, no, I no. haven't. The I have blog's there. The blog. Do you want to know the my journey? The yes, the excuse me, biography journey of Valerie. Let's push some of this back to the blog. You must go to the blog. You must go, which is linked in the description. You could also put it in chat at the end. That way, um, you can click. Well, I don't know if they can click on it from the live or not. All right, so going around. This we know is lighter. So let's go ahead and go darker. Is it, bro? Am I? Slow. Hmm? I love you. I was responding to Burl. No, I really love you. Love you too. What? What's going on? I just want to tell you how much I love you. Okay. Which I know that. We know this. And, and, and I love you as well. You weren't looking at the screen, so all is good in the world. What? I love you. I'm doing my job here. Alright? With this foolishness. You know what? If you can't. Enjoy the foolishness. Not on me. Jerry Fortin just bought an Optima. Awesome. Get it. But he's using another brand, but was not impressed with the inconsistent burn. Yes. I am paying attention, Burl. But I can. I, I can only look in so many directions at once. Unfortunately, Jerry, that is actually with quite a few of the burners. Um, I'm still working on three reviews but I will say that was a good decision all right so I bumped up the heat but you notice it's only by half and because I'm still using the same strokes and I'm using I'm moving quickly we're not getting all that much difference between the burns so let's get some darks in here See, some of them need to be blended back because if I just leave the halo around some of them, it's just going to look off. So that's good. Let's see, we have the light one right there that we really need to keep so we can go a little lighter around it and then blend out to darker. And that will make things really look like they're supposed to be like that. See, we can actually be messy with this background, which helps make it feel less uh, daunting. Joe Bell is here and says, howdy. Hi, Joe. Joe Bell. 
Hoody howdy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to hold the wood up with the arm I'm burning with and block. We need the breeze in the studio and in the house because without air conditioning it becomes very, very hot and stuffy. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I can't use the air on my tip. Spence wants to know, what do you mean by, bend it, by blended back? Uh, that was probably just misspeak. I'm just blending from light to dark. That's it. It was me speaking and not connecting. <laughs> I'm just doing a gradient, so I'm going I'm going light, so here's light, and then we've got another one there, and then going dark, but it's not like I'm doing a super smooth gradient, because I do want that texture, so I just meant back, because we've been doing dark here, so I'm going from light back to the dark. That's what my brain was thinking, and I'm going to stick with it. I had to talk out my excuse. So Jerry said that she had another burner and she thought it was her until she started watching this channel. She realized it wasn't her. Yeah, unfortunately that happens a lot. Sadly. You think you're doing it. And, and sometimes as a new person burning, you are doing it. We all do it. It happens. But sometimes it truly is the wood or the burner. Sometimes you've picked... You know, just not the right wood for the project you're wanting to do. And so you're fighting that. And sometimes, it truly is your burner. Uh, Jabelle says, been watching you all on and off for about a year now. Oh, yay! And Katerina Zufava says, I love your work. Oh, thank you, Katerina. And welcome. So we're almost down to this hair. I'm going to have to leave some space because... I haven't decided. See, we have some hair flicking coming out from the mane over the uh, next ear. Next ear, the right ear. And so I don't know that I want to actually scratch out the hair. So I might do a little bit of burning around it. We'll see. Because I can shape it. I haven't decided yet. So burning around it would be just leaving a gap like this. Go ahead and fill in the background, and then I would fill in the background around here, and then I would push it in until it made it smoother in the size of the hair. See, I'm being really messy with this. So, trying not to outline it, so to speak. Oop, really should flip the board. So my hot part is not touching my part I want light. Go. Are we on camera? Yes. So see I'm doing, and I can thin out that hair the closer I get and make sure I pay attention to what side of the hair I'm on. So I keep touching down in the wrong spot. Get some more darks back in here. Break it up. Get some lights. Push some of it back. Moving quickly so that the pin is not making contact as long because I also want this to be blurry. I don't want any detail back here other than the detail of some lights mixed with dark because this is further back in the photo and when something's further back in the photo it is less in focus. So we need to make sure I don't put too much detail. And the easiest way to do that is to do what I'm doing right here is just blend it into the place next to it and it fuzzes it out because I don't have any like right here right now I do have a bit of um, detail because of how sharp the line is but then if I go back and do a little bit of work I'm pushing some of this back it will look less detailed. It will have blurred it out. So you only stream on YouTube, right? Yes. Okay, because Joe got lost. Yeah. I, I thought that was the case. I didn't think that we had any, like, I know that it, if you did, it would have been very, very limited. But 
I have a Twitch account in order to hold my brand name, but I don't stream on Twitch. Gotcha. Or I have it yet. One of these days when we can afford like a computer and hookups that allow me to stream to two locations at once, then yeah. maybe I'll look at going ahead and, and doing Twitch as well and streaming at the same time. Two places, one set of work. <laughs> Alright, so when I get to this knot, I am still going to burn over this knot. And I put this knot, I oriented this, pay, uh, meaning at the top where it was dark for a reason, so I can blend it in. And now I feel... I was going to ask about that. No, no, my tip's still clean. I'll show real quickly, maybe. Because I'm burning with lower heat, even though I'm still burning dark, I'm not getting the carbon buildup that you normally would. If I had my pin turned up, I'd have more carbon sticking to my tip. And when you have carbon sticking to your tip, what it feels like, it just kind of feels like you're dragging your pin a little bit um, over, say, a, p a sticky area where you've removed the tag and there's still that little bit of glue. And something when you, you know, run your finger over it or you run something over it it just kind of has that little hesitation and it feels like it's um, kind of holding you back a little bit that is what carbon on the tip feels like hmm. I, I don't know how else to, to, to no, that's a good description I think. it just feels like it's caught let's see here let's push that back Joe Bell is a pyrographer as well, um, located in Texas. In Texas. In Texas. Oh, we got Breeze. So see now it's burning slightly different around the knot because I flipped the board. I'm guessing this particular wood just likes to be in, burned in this direction, meaning the board is up and down knot. What I need to figure out and pay more attention to is after you've done sanding, even though you've gone up to 400 and it's smooth, if you run a piece of paper or run a soft paper towel across it, it'll, when you go in one direction to wipe off the sanding material, the sawdust basically, it, it's smooth. Your, your towel or whatnot doesn't catch on the grain. But if you go in the opposite direction, it catches and you get these little bits of fibers that stick up. I'm trying to remember, I'm rubbing the back of this board. It appears, sorry, I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling up my wood. Don't ask. But I am technically doing exactly that. Terrible. Hmm. Alright, so I'm telling you it's burning better with the wood like this versus upside down. What that is, is my grain is laying down this way and when you push up this way it goes up. So it appears, and I will have to pay more attention in general, that it burns a little better when you go and have the board facing... The, even though I'm, I'm working up, I'm still burning down. I know that sounds so weird. And if you're just listening to me, you just went, huh? Without looking. It's burning better down, which means the grain's laying down. So that's how this, this piece of wood is burning better. You, you may have to... I gotta figure out how to explain that better because that, that was like all over the place. Well, it's not, it's not that. I mean, I understand what you're trying to get, but to but to somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about, it might be helpful. I'll have to be able to take some macro photos of the wood so you can see. Maybe that's the like, grain standing up. I'm gonna have to try. Maybe a blog. Maybe for your. Blog. Maybe a blog. I haven't written, written a post I think in a that long time. Falls into like, Wood selection and prep. Oh, I haven't, yeah, I'm prep. Yeah. Let me do a little bit more testing. And what I mean by testing on this is actually me paying attention. I think I've got it right. 
just based on some thoughts I've had in the past, but I need to test it a little bit more. Gotcha. Just to make sure I'm not giving bad information. I hate bad information. It makes me cranky. It is true. I will you tell you I don't know it. before I give you bad information. Yeah. What is Teresa doing? What are you talking about? We didn't say hi to Teresa. Did she just come in? Mm, no. We she didn't say hi. Wow. You did not tell me. Well, I thought... You got you thrown did. off during the sound check. You did it. Alright, so this just needs to be pushed back. I do not want it to have any specific pattern. I want to make sure it looks random. Because that is how flowers grow. Are you talking about Joe Bell's question? Because I didn't read that question, Teresa and Burl, because you guys answered it. What did he ask? She asked if this was Birchwood. And, oh, okay. And Burl answered. Poplar. Poplar. Yeah, I got it all linked down in the description. Do my job, Burl. Jeez. Yeah, but he's going to say he ain't the moderator. Yeah, I know. Even though I've offered her the job, she don't want to do it. All right, so see, as I keep, I'm gonna have this area is gonna be dark. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot. And here's another thing: my horse picture, the reference, wasn't as wide as my board, so I actually had to make up information um, for the areas that didn't have it. So I need to just make sure I pay attention to that. I can always go back. And push it more further back in. So that's. Ben says I find that if I burn in one direction, it's a different feeling. Yep. When I turn yep. the board around and burn in a different direction. And that's the difference between the grains laying down in their natural state versus going against the grain, pushing them up. Um, yeah, you're right. So I'm going to real quick right here. The horse is actually a little bit darker than the background. Um, I have a piece of scratch poplar off to the side. I know you guys can't see it. I'm moving my pen over here. I touch that. This is another thing for for those new to have a piece of scratch wood similar to the board you're working on. That way you can do two things. You can test the heat before you touch down, but even more so, you pull some heat from the wood to keep from having that dreaded blob. So I, and I'll show very quickly, because we're already, yeah. This is my poplar piece. I have a birch and a basswood. And all I'm doing is when, when you don't see my hand on camera, is I'm just dragging real quick, or I'm testing my heat going, okay, that's too dark, that's not dark enough. Pull the heat, and then I start burning. And then I don't get the blob as much. And I'm not freaking out because, oh no, I just burned too hot. Hotter than I expected because I've just tested. Like right there, that was really hot. But for just half a second, I pulled heat. You can also blow on your tip as you go to touch down. And kind of act like you're going to whisper it sweet mess it, that nothing's just although I suspect you do that actually do that too what me yeah, and my yeah. pins discuss are between me and my pins yes I know so make sure you do, you test your pin before you touch down again I held my pin up for longer than a second and it, re it heats up it reheats very quickly and so I knew if I touch down before I tested my heat, I would scorch the wood. Jobel, uh, we are live every Tuesday at this time. Yeah. At 11 o'clock Arizona time. So. I'm trying to build up some carbon to quickly clean my tip, but it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. So this area of the horse will go darker. I just hadn't gone the full temperature. And I'm doing this in order to hopefully pull some carbon on my tip. Maybe. Because I already know this is darker. Let's see here. I feel a little bit. Well, it is not a lot. So I 
I'm gonna turn off my pen. See, Always turn off your pen to clean. See, Burl, you can you need to remember, Burl, that the we chat is do. chat is instantaneous. Uh, right. But the video is on delay. Yeah. So I it do is. answer. So Pull my pen real quick. In chat. So I can show you guys stuff. I'm fighting with chat right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fighting with Burl. Yeah, I know. You're not fighting with Cat. You're fighting with Burl. Teresa. You realize Burl can call Teresa me. Teresa too. They're bullies. <laughs> you realize Burl can call me at any time, and I'll just pass the phone off to her, right? Yeah. What type of smoke were you inhaling? Um, well, <laughs> Burl. It was a mixture of juniper and pine. And you, uh, maybe some sagebrush uh, and mesquite. A uh, fine, chaparral. A fine blend. A fine blend, yes. A fine blend of smoke. Let's see here. I still don't really have carbon on my tip. Plug my pen just so it's easier for me to control. All right, so it's gonna be hotter down here. The tip itself is cooled down. Let's see how much I can kill. Even with all that burning, you guys just saw me do for working on darks. I still really don't have carbon. Best way to check carbon because oxidation on your tip is a it's good a cold thing, pen, right? Huh? That's a cold pen, right? Yeah. I'm yes. just checking. Yes, love. What is my job? Ouch. It's safety. Ouch. No, it's, safety. it's cold. It's always safety. But I had already said I turned it One off. safety. I waved always it. Always safety. You, <laughs> you were too busy arguing with Burl. You missed my whole safety part. Word. I said it's only a cold tip. That was not checking. You were too busy arguing with Burl. All right. That's so I can feel a little bit of ground. Negative ghost rider. The pattern is full. There we go. Let's see if I can get that glare to... The balance. It's always hard. It just looks like you're shaking the pan. I know. It's oxidation, but I do have a little bit of carbon. I can feel it. Yeah. So I use my fingernail and rub it over. And if you can feel the car, you can, you'll feel uh, feel it being a little uh, gritty, not smooth. Like yeah, there's some carbon right there. So this is my leather strap. It has aluminum oxide on it. This is the aluminum oxide powder that I use. I get this from um, Mountain Wood Carvers. You use so little of this, th this container will last my whole career. And when I stop burning at 125, there'll still be at least a half bottle left. That's how little you use. I haven't put any on my strop in a long time. Put it to one side because you want to drag your tip get some of that aluminum uh, oxide on there so we see a little bit and then go to a clean area meaning an area that does not have aluminum oxide and we're going to do some more wiping and then I'm going to stop and rub my fingernail and there is no carbon I do not feel any carbon so the tip is clean this brown that you're seeing on there is oxidation we want to keep it oxidation is stronger than carbon and carbon is easier to knock off when your tip is oxidized. Let me see here. So I have to run my finger over the tip, and I've used a couple of tips, so that's why I'm checking. There. Um, nope, that's clean. So the strop is going to get dirty. You don't have to buy a new one. You just keep using it. It's not a big deal. Mike says he uses auto saw. Oh, he uses he, what? He said autosol, and he says probably contains aluminum <coughs> oxide anyways. I'm not I sure what that is. I, don't know what auto I will have to look it up. I don't know what that is. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also aluminum oxide. Um, I know Pat uh, sells it with a burner. I personally don't like them. To me, they don't. They're pretty hard and don't really attached to my uh, suede part of the strop. Other strops are different and it, it may work better. I just don't personally like it. You can make a strop and I've got all this on the blog on how to clean your tip. You can zoom in quickly. This is a piece of leather glued to a piece of wood. I have not put any aluminum oxide on this. So you can use an old belt. You can also use blue jean. Kathy wants to know do you recommend certain ultra tips? Ultra tips. Also, real quick, Joe Bell has to go. Bye, nice Joe. Catch you all. Have a nice day. Thank you for joining us. That's all you need right there. That's all I'm going to do. Um, 
ultra tips. Are you talking like the 12 S, the 9 MP, 9 PP? I'm trying to think what the ultra tips are. Um, not all tips are made for flat burning, so I may not have all the tips she's talking about. So, Mike says when I was all it's a metal polish for cars. That mm. carpenter he used it to polish chisels and cleaners. Mm, I I I'll look more into it. I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm not even fifty percent sure, so I don't want to say either way. Hey Val. Uh, so what was my question again? The ultimate. Do you remember certain ultra tips? For flat work, they're fine. They're totally fine. Ultima tips. Any Optima? Optima pins. Got it. Okay. Um, the. I do have a couple I recommend. <laughs> Burl's just wrote 12. <laughs> this is the 18M. See the name of the tip where Burl is keeping count of, of my errors. I don't know. It's one of the two. <laughs> I, I use both of these tips. I've actually been using the 18 small more so than the 18M, but either one of these tips. Um, the 19M ball tip. The 17SR coarse hair. That's part of my one, two, three. That's a part of my set. What am I missing? Mm -hmm. I got a ball tip, got a shader, I got a skew. Oh, I, mean, I know tips. it is. That's what she was listening. Twelve was when she was listing the small tips. And you were listing them. Oh, okay. And the where did I put it? Mm hmm. It's right, 9M. 9M. So, w one or both of these and these <laughs> are the ones I recommend starting off with because you can do the most with them. Okay. Um, overall. Mike wants to know 18 is the wire gauge? 18 gauge, yes. For the Optimus, yes. Yep. I don't think he, I don't think Pat has anything. 20 gig, you don't think. Val wants to know what is the size of the ball tip that you're showing. This one is a. Sorry. Get a pivot order. It's easier for my brain to. It's the medium. That is the medium. This is the small. I think I have a photo. I can. Po I think. Did I post them in group? I did. So that you can see the different ball sizes. It's hard on camera because they're going to look bigger than they are. Um, without a size reference, of which I have nothing to currently grab for reference. So, not anything that's recognizable in size. So, the one I was holding was the medium, because the reason I, I, I use the medium the most, I sign with the medium, and since I also recommend the 9M. I just put down the money. I did. Where did I put it? Uh, my headache. Sorry, I'm trying to look. Some, a couple of the other. Because I recommend the, the 9M, I go with the 19 uh, medium. Because that, this is actually smaller than the small ball tip. And they just give you two different sizes that we'll do that are in the same family of burning. All right. Part of the reason I was having a problem with trying to find what tips where is I didn't have them in order. Oh. I didn't have them in order. I so normally have them so in order. You. Normally when I start a new project, I put all my pins in order because as I'm burning, I tend to just, you know, toss a pin down and grab the next one that I want to use mm -hmm. or test. And in doing so, sometimes when they're out of order, it's harder to follow. But I 
I'm gonna fix it right now. But no, I'm not, because we need to see if there's any other clusters. So I will keep working on the horse, but see how the horse is already starting to pop out because we're putting in that dark background. This area is gonna have to go a little lighter. Or actually, this will be darker. This will be about this heat. Yeah. This will be darker. And I'm looking at the camera because that way I know I'm pointing at the right spot. And it's going to be blurry, just like here. And as we get closer, the flowers are going to get a little bigger and a little more detailed. So next week, I will make sure to have all the face in at the very least. And we will work on our flowers that are actually going over the horse hood. Because that might feel a little daunting. Burning something else over your subject. So we'll go over that next week. I don't feel we're going to have to evacuate. No. Clouds are building, so yay! Just say, send us rain, but no lightning. No lightning. Yep. We'll take all of Burl's rain. Oh, Spencer told me last night they were hot and no rain. Oh, but Burl doesn't like rain, so we'll just take all of her rain anyway. But he does, he's not getting no rain. We need her rain. In the future. We need her rain that's going In down. In the future. We need the rain that's now. We need her rain now. There's no argument. Oh, <laughs> I had to think about that one. I was trying to figure out what smoke you're talking about. No, I did not. Uh -huh. On any smoke. Okay. <laughs> now it says evacuate. What? Oh, Jerry does have a question. Yes, uh, I saw that. Uh, is there a particular place you get your wood blanks? It depends on what I'm what I'm getting. All my birch I get from Trakel, which is listed down below. This poplar was a board that I had cut down that I got from um, Arizona Wood Carvers. I also link that. My basswood, if I'm doing uh, planks like this, panels, boards I, that are up to, uh, what is it, 8 inches, I get from North American Basswood, Finest Basswood Company. I can't remember what Armand's... It's down in the description. I can't remember exactly. That's linked down below. And if I'm doing circles, then I just buy the walnut hollow uh, sort uh, ovals. Or if I want a live edge basswood, I just I just get the walnut hollow. I do. Yeah, everything should be listed down below. I have like a bunch of things listed. I have the optima listed, different woods. Well, is this Trickell? Trickell's the birch. Oh, because I'm not working on basswood, I don't have the basswood link in. That's gotcha. why I've got the poplar link in. So I will up, I will fix that and put all the woods together. So uh, Val Daniel, evacuate. Basically, my uh, awesomeness has been increasing exponentially, and we have to leave the county sometimes because there's just too much awesome. And so I have to let it drop down a little bit. And then... 20 miles away, we, we, we've been put on set evacuation order, meaning we have to get ready yeah. and be set to go. Convenient, yeah. Because we have a giant wildfire burning to the southwest of us. Because there's a wildfire. It has already burned over 24,000 acres. Yesterday alone, it burned 20,000 acres and 10 miles. And because it was burning so hot and fast... 10 miles a day would put the fire here in our front yard in under three days. So we are under set evacuation orders. Last night, the wind calmed down, the temperature dropped, and that helped slow the wildfire down. Plus, it's going through a canyon right now. Fingers crossed it doesn't jump the canyon. If it does not jump the canyon, we are completely safe. We don't have to worry about it. If it jumps the canyon, we do have, um, we got some worrying to do because then it's nothing but more forest between us and the fire if it jumps the canyon and it will burn fast and it will be burn hot because we aren't in a drought. We didn't get a whole lot of snow and we haven't been getting a whole lot of rain in the last two years. So we're basically sitting in a pile of wood waiting for the fireplace. Arizona, Mike. Arizona. Northern Arizona. Um, but, but it also could be because we're cause of awesome, right? No. No. Well, I can never come to visit there. Why can't you come to visit? 
This is summertime. Um, hopefully, if we get some decent monsoons come July, a lot of what we're dealing with, other parts of the state will still have to deal with that, but we'll, we're dealing with it will calm down big time if we can get the monsoon. So, um, yeah, we, um, our younger son has already set up for us um, a place, a house to evacuate to on the other side of town. So that he's already set that up for us that allow us to take the doggies because that was one one thing we were going to have an issue with so cole set that up for us um optimus coming with me <laughs> all the other birders are going to stay here but the optimus Val says oh she can never visit there because she's too awesome she oh visit. it's too dry for god gotcha. david albuquerque says i'm from brazil hi david David Albuquerque from Brazil. <laughs> that throws me off. Because <laughs> New Mexico, Albuquerque is just six hours down the road. Maybe there's so that throws me off a little bit. Maybe there's an Albuquerque in Brazil. Or maybe yeah, if that word is... probably came from Brazil before it got or here. Maybe his last name is really Albuquerque. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing my job. <laughs> Doing my job, Burl. So, yeah. Um,. We, I don't ex we don't expect the wildfire to hit us. Uh, we also, our neighbor across the street um, that I still need to finish the rattlesnake for, he works actually for the forestry and his supervisor is working on the fire with fire management and he has been giving him updates because he knows he lives in the set zone and so he has graciously made a, um, a group chat for us neighbors and he's giving us the updates as to what's going on. So I just got to get that rattlesnake done for him. <laughs> Between helping shovel snow and giving us alerts for the wildfire, he's been a very good neighbor. Yes, he is. Well, they all have. So we made sure our neighbors were ready to go. And so, yeah. That's what's going on. It's not, I don't feel it's going to get to us. It is a very big canyon it has to go through. It is now between Sedona and us. And the winds have shifted. Because of yesterday, it was coming directly for us. Like, directly. <laughs> but we're good. Yeah. So we got any more questions? I don't see any now. Don't got no more. You gotta do the thing. I do gotta do the thing. But I was waiting to see if anybody answered. You need to learn how to do it. But it's you. Because uh, I gotta reach. I'm the head I gotta, cat. I gotta reach I over here. I have a set res amount of responsibilities. I'm gonna up your responsibilities. Oh, well, I'm gonna ask for a raise. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't fire me. <laughs> Remember, you already said I was the boss. I know. I know. All right, say it with me. You know what to say. You're awesome. You can do this. Why? Because you're a pyro artist. Happy burning, guys. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe and like. Subscribe and like. Subscribe and like. Yeah, keep going. Subscribe and like. Subscribe and like. <laughs>